So when we're constantly told that to not affirm children in their, uh, con in, the, in their condition is to risk that they'll take their own lives, it's pretty amazing to discover, as I, and I, I, I just want to test this, there is precisely no evidence of increased suicide risk at all. There is, there is strong evidence that it doesn't. Yes. Right. That's, right. That's now, yeah. That hypothesis can now be discarded. Yeah. So children who are gender distressed are, sadly, more suicidal and a bit more likely to kill themselves. But the two things you need to know are, one, it's really not a high risk. It's tiny numbers, but of course every child's suicide is a horrendous tragedy. But two, yeah. these children have many other sources of distress. A child who's seen at a gender clinic very commonly has some or all of like a large number of eating disorder, childhood sex abuse, family trauma, um, autistic spectrum disorder, cutting, you know, depression, anxiety, OCD, all these conditions, like children commonly have several of them. And these are known as co comorbidities. So when you compare the children in gender clinics with children who have similar men other mental distress, all that excess vanishes all the excess suicidality, which again is not very high. So it's the most disgusting bit of moral blackmail I've ever seen in my life on any subject is to tell parents you must do this thing or else your child will kill themselves. I mean, I, I'm, so, if I, I'm angry about many things in this and I haven't allowed myself to feel the anger since I discovered this topic, which was about 2018. Because I can't, you know, I can't get up every day and feel this angry when there's work to be done and I have to focus on the work and the future and be willing to accept people changing their minds when I'm angry with them forever having got it wrong in the first place. But since the CAS review came out last week, I have been so angry because I've allowed myself to feel the anger, like the sheer viciousness of telling parents and teachers, if you don't affirm a lie in this child, the child will kill themselves, when there was no evidence for that, when it was false. It's downright wicked is what it is. And at the same time, probably neither the parents nor the children had the risk of sterility explained to them. If you if no, because I mean we know that that came out in the in the in the Kira Bell hearing. So at the first hearing, um, they called the endocrinologist who headed the service where they would refer the children for their puberty blockers, and the um, the, the the lawyer who was representing that endocrinologist was asked what were the youngest kids they had prescribed puberty blockers to and they're given puberty blockers to three 10 year old girls and at 10 you know that's definitely early enough that if the child starts puberty blockers and then goes straight on to testosterone that child will be sterile absolutely definitely sterile um like no possibility of like it's i'm not talking about infertility i was infertile i went to a fertility clinic and had children by ivf with my husband this is sterility there is no fertility to save because your gonads your um your testicles or your ovaries, they mature in, in puberty. That's when they become capable of producing, you know, the things that turn into babies. So these girls, if they go on that pathway, they will be sterile, no doubt. And also testosterone is very bad for a woman's reproductive organs. It's very bad for her uterus and her vagina. Um, it thins the walls of them, causes pain, bleeding and atrophy. So these girls are being put on a pathway that means they're going to have to have a hysterectomy young, like before they're 20. And the endocrinologist was asked, were they counselled about this? And you ask yourself, like, how could you possibly, possibly explain any of this to a 10 year old? Mm. 10 year olds tend to say stupid things like, um, oh, I don't want to be a mother anyway, but anyway, if I change my mind, I'll just adopt. Like how many 10 year olds know what it's like to adopt? Like we looked into adoption. This is not an easy path and you don't do it for you, you do it for the child. So they didn't. And the excuse they gave was that it was possible that the girls could come off the puberty blockers at age 14 for six months or so, allow their ovaries to mature enough that they could go through a cycle or two of IVF and collect and freeze the eggs. I mean, again, I've done fertility treatment. This is just, uh, I mean, it's, it's a fiction. Uh, like it's, 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 it's a dystopian fiction. Nobody is going to do that. You've got a child who thinks she's a boy. Nobody is going to let themselves develop enough. It's a miserable experience getting eggs harvested. We don't know how many frozen eggs ever um, thaw and produce babies. But anyway, she's going to have to have her uterus taken out. Who's going to have the baby for her? Like the whole thing is just fantasy. 